taking your time all of you and uh, being a part of this presentation uh, i do understand this topic you know sometimes can get a little heavy in our uh, perception but uh, you know today i'm going to take you through the basics the concept what is it uh, estate planning is all about and i assure you by the end of it uh, you would have learned something so i'll just share my screen and then we can uh, dive right into the presentation essentially yellow has created first of its kind app in india through which you can create your own will you don't need to be dependent on a lawyer or you don't need to go to a law firm i being a lawyer myself i can vouch for that you don't need to approach a chartered accountant and then make your will you can do it yourself we also understand that you know when a loved one passes away there is a lot of administrative and operational work that is required to be done that is you need to run around to the banks and financial institutions and mutual fund houses to actually get the whole asset transfer process done and that is why we do that on your behalf uh, so you know at that time you can take the time to heal you can take the time to cope up so all this running around can be done by us we also understand that sometimes some families may need a more customized solution uh, because an app may not necessarily be enough for you so we also cater to that and lastly uh, you know yellow has been built by experts that's lawyers and chartered accountants and estate planning experts having a combined experience of over 50 years and you can see we've got experience from ey pwc iflm kotak so today's session is focused more on senior citizens uh, there are special laws which apply to senior citizens so i'll take you through that as well what are your rights when it comes to estate planning so you can you know avoid the mistakes that many other people have made so firstly i will take you through the very basics you know this whole topic of estate planning itself there's very less awareness generally when we say it's a session on estate planning people think we're here to talk about real estate but uh, that is not what estate planning is all about but i'll take you through the meaning of it and the essence there are a lot of misconceptions in this space so we'll clear those out there are several estate planning tools which are available so we'll take you through those and accordingly you can choose which one is more suitable for you we'll focus more on wills today because that is the most fundamental aspect of the entire estate planning scene and lastly little bit about yellow how you can use our services and there's a special coupon code which is available for uh, the silver talkies community and uh, you can avail of those offers okay so let's us first a uh, big uh, you know understand what does the wealth journey of an individual look like you know we as indians we are very good with this concept of saving it's ingrained in us that we need to save for our loved ones family members you know next generation and sometimes even grandchildren what we are not very good at is actually realizing that even though you've saved enough for them in the absence of a will or in the absence of an estate plan your family needs to go through n number of hardships for them to actually access that very amount the same amount that you kept aside for them so today we'll first start with seeing by seeing what are the several issues that actually family members come across when the person who's passed on has not left behind a will so i think we should always begin with some hard hitting facts to understand the gravity of the situation that we are in in india there are approximately 1 lakh 50000 crores of assets which are lying unclaimed this means families have not come forth to claim those assets these are only financial assets mind you have not even touching upon the real estate the main reason for this is families are unaware that these assets even exist so naturally when somebody doesn't know that oh my my father or my mother 
had this bank account so they don't even come forth to claim these assets moving on the property and family related disputes which are plaguing the indian courts today 76% of them are actually because of property related disputes and lastly if everything goes well that is if there are no disputes between the family members it takes around 3 whole years to complete all the uh, you know post death formalities now you may wonder why does it take 3 years so in the next slide i'll explain to you why there's such a long delay in the absence of a will now let's understand when there is any asset that an individual owns what are the ways in which the asset is passed on see essentially there are only two ways in which the asset goes on to your loved ones one is when you have written a will and in your will you are specifying how your assets are going to be distributed now when you don't mention you know how your assets are going to be dealt with the law decides on your behalf so which means in the absence of a will let's say a hindu male has passed away in the absence of a will his wife his children and his mother are equally entitled to the estate now the reason i said hindu male is because all these succession laws are governed by your religion because in india we don't have one uniform law which applies to all religion so the proportion in which the assets distribute get distributed also depend on your religion so it's different for christians different for muslims different for hindus different for parsis etc now the the so to say the complexity is only increased from here <coughs> sorry because now the property gets divided on the basis of your marital status your gender or uh, you know which of course religion you belong to so there are so many complexities which come in another challenge is that when you don't have a will in place at the time of asset transfer the banks and the mutual fund houses and the municipal authorities ask you to produce certain documents now they may be called as family tree certificate or legal heir certificate in gujarat it's called pedi nama in uh, uh, you know in in west bengal it's called varisu nama these are all different names so you one needs to go and you know procure all these documents because the authorities don't know who are the rightful legal heirs and that is why this entire process is extremely time consuming it's uh, monetarily very expensive and also emotionally very taxing now let us just take a look at what are the several myths which are there in this space so firstly one of the very common misconception is that if you have appointed a nominee in your bank account then i don't need a will but let me tell you as a general rule there are few exceptions but we'll focus on the general law today your nominee is only a custodian or a trustee of the asset your nominee does not become the owner let me give you an example if i have let's say hdfc bank account i have made my sister as a nominee now when i pass away without writing a will my sister can go to the bank she can claim the asset but she can't spend it because she is not the rightful owner i being a hindu female it's my husband and my children who will be the rightful heirs so technically my sister is supposed to collect the amount and give it to my husband and my children because they are the rightful owners now it's all fine if my sister and my husband are getting along but that is where most of the disputes come because nominee is believed that they become the owners but they are not coming to joint holding people also think that just because i own a bank account jointly or if i own a, a you know a flat jointly with my spouse if one person is not around 
the remaining asset goes to the surviving joint holder. That's not true because again, even in a joint asset, let's say you own a flat, you know, with your husband, if the husband passes away, then his share of the asset goes to his legal heirs. So which means if it's a Hindu male passing away, that 50% will then be divided between, you know, the wife's share, the mother's share, as well as the children's share. And that is why it becomes very important that irrespective of whether you have joint holding or nomination, a will is a must. Coming to uh, the next point. People believe that a will is to be made only when one is really unwell or one is old. That's not true. A will ideally should have been made as of yesterday. But even if it's not, now is the time. You don't need a lawyer to make a will, especially with the yellow app, because we've designed it in such a way that all the legalese have already been added. So you don't need to be dependent on anyone. And you know, it's really easy to change your will. In fact, we recommend that you update your will from time to time. A will need not be registered or stamped or notarized to make it legally valid in India. Yes, registering a will has its own advantages. I'll come to that a little later. But just because you've not registered it does not mean that your will is invalid. People also usually believe that everything goes to my spouse as it is. So then why do I need a will? But you know, I gave you the example a little while ago, how it's always number of people who are entitled to the assets. It's never only your spouse. So in the event, you are somebody that you think that, okay, if I'm not there, you know, my wife should be taken care of. Or if I'm not there, my husband should be taken care of. After that, it can go to our children. Then a will is an absolute must. You don't need to be of a particular net worth in order to make a will. Uh, a will is for everyone. So even if you have one single bank account, a will is needed. People often ask me, I have only one child. Do I still need to make a will? The answer is yes, because the municipal authorities and the banks don't know that you have only one child. They will still ask you to go and produce the legal heir and succession certificate, etc. So a will can simplify all those aspects. Also, you don't lose control over the asset, which means just because I mentioned that this house of mine will go to my husband, my husband becomes the owner of that flat only once I'm not there anymore, not before that, which means during my life, I have complete control over that asset. And I, since I can change my will anytime, I have the freedom to make those changes as well. Lastly, making a will with a yellow app is really easy. It's not time consuming and it's really friendly on the pocket too. We'll move on. So I'll take you through some of the estate planning tools uh, and how, you know, it can be beneficial for your situation. So let's start with the will. A will is the most basic and the most fundamental of this entire wheel that you can see. Any other tool which you use, whether it's a trust or a gift, etc., it will be in addition to a will. It will sit on top of a will. So will is a must. It will be will plus trust or will plus gift deed, etc. Now, only when a will is not sufficient to meet your goals, that is when you can explore a trust or a gift deed. But if you think that, yes, you know, a will is good enough, then you don't need the other aspects. Now, really easy to create a will. It can be on a plain paper. You write your personal details, details of your family members, details of your assets. Uh, you can mention which asset should go to whom. Uh, you need to be, you know, minimum 18 years of age, sound mind. You need to sign it. Physical signature, digital signatures are not permitted on a will. So you sign it, you have two more witnesses to do the same and that constitutes a legally valid will in India. Moving on to a trust. Now, 
like i said when a will is not sufficient to meet your goals you can look at other aspects now what can be those situations where a will may not be sufficient now let's take an example see when i mention in my will let's say you know 1 lakh rupees should go to my child so when i'm not around that money immediately goes to my child there is no arrangement where i can say that only when my child turns 30 he should receive the amount that doesn't work it's a bullet payout but sometimes when you want to put in certain terms and conditions you know let's say you have a certain uh, amount of wealth and you don't want your children to receive something that soon even you know sometimes when a child is small even a lakh can be a recipe for disaster so in that case a trust is a good option whereas you can put terms and conditions regarding when the money will go to your family members now to it just explain the structure briefly you have somebody called as a settler the settler settles the assets into the trust he identifies certain people known as trustees these trustees basically uh, take in charge of the administration and management of the property and you have beneficiaries which means these are the people uh, who reap the benefits of the trust now because you have certain trustees so it's a proper entity which is created uh, so since you have trustees who will look after the amount hold on to it etc you can add terms and conditions so trust can be useful uh, you know for in case like i said you want to put terms and conditions or in case you have uh, you know uh, children who are us citizens because in us you have also something called as a inheritance tax or a death tax so in these situations a trust can be beneficial coming to gift deed now uh, gifting is quite popular in india but uh, you know we don't recommend gifting all your assets to your children because you lose control over your asset and uh, you don't want to be the next singhania because you know in in the case of this is the raymond family in case of mrs singhania he gifted a volume of his assets to his son only to you know realize that the relationship between them have soured and unfortunately he did not even have enough not a roof on his head and nothing to even take care of himself that's why it's okay to uh, you know gift a small portion of your assets but definitely uh, not all of it uh, we've already touched upon joint holding and uh, you know uh, uh, survivorship aspect coming to nomination now like we said like i mentioned earlier your nominee is only a custodian or a trustee uh and not the owner however appointing a nominee becomes very important because asset transfer is much smoother so what we recommend is you appoint let's say i've appointed my sister as a beneficiary in my will then i can make my sister as a nominee but if i want my husband to receive the amount mention his name in the will and also make him a nominee so there's no conflict between a nominee and the beneficial owner okay so we'll talk about a case study over here this is in furtherance to the singhania case that i mentioned so in india we actually have a law called as a maintenance and welfare of parents and senior citizens act which actually gives you the power that in case if you're gifting something to your family member with the anticipation with the expectation that they will take care of you then you should mention a clause in your gift deed a written clause that you know if the family member is not going to take care of me i have a right to revoke it so there are several cases i have quoted two of them here they've gone to the supreme court as well in both these cases the family member did not mention about uh, you know this clause because of that unfortunately the supreme court did not revoke the gift deed so please exercise this option especially uh, it this can be in your favor so just make a mention of it because the court says it's extremely important that the condition is written in the gift deed so just write it and you have the right that you can take your property back you know in case the family member is not taking care of you moving on 
Now, this is called as an advanced uh, medical directive. Uh, this is a very popular term you would have seen recently. So, living will is uh, a very recent concept in India. Uh, as you can see, this just came in force in, in January 2023 and the law earlier was much more difficult. Uh, now it's gotten better. But let's understand what this living will really is. See, by now you all know what a regular will is. Regular will, you, regular will talks only about disposing of your assets, right? And regular will comes into force only once we are not there anymore, okay? So these two aspects you need to take care of. Now with the living will, the purpose of the living will is that at times there may be a situation where a person has become terminally ill and there is no hope for recovery. In that case, in this document, you can just mention that, look, if I become terminally ill and in case if there's no hope of my recovery, in that case, my family members can basically pull the plug and take the decision. So this document becomes very important because it gives the family members, uh, you know, the peace of mind that yes, we're doing the right thing. Because sometimes in those situations, we tend to become emotional and it's harder for family members naturally to take these calls. But obviously, uh, there are several aspects and caution that needs to be exercised, especially when we are creating it. Uh, so the basic requirements are you need to be 18 years of age, sound mind, uh, the will would have been created, you know, free of any external pressure. Then uh, you also need to have, uh, you know, a notary or a gazetted officer. Uh, so your witness and gazette officer actually say that, yes, this person has created this living will uh, without any external pressure. Uh, there are additional steps that are to be taken. You need to hand over a copy of this to your family doctor. And you also need to give it to a custodian, which is appointed by the municipal government. The reason why, you know, the law has made it so strict and all these processes are there so that there's no potential misuse and there's no pressure from the family, you know, uh, that is why. So, uh, you know, th these are the processes uh, which are there regarding the living will. So we'll pause here. We'll take a short break here for any questions that you may have. You can either unmute yourself and ask or you can also put it in the chat box. Bank account with Y as joint holding. Excess will bequits the funds account to his wife Z. So does excess will completely exclude the joint holder from these funds? That's a very good question, Mr. Pai. So see, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. Let's say the entire money which is there, does it belong only to Mr. X or has Y also been putting in the money from time to time? Because sometimes, you know, when husband, wife are joint holders, generally the wife is added only for the sake of convenience. Also, one thing to be considered is when you are filing your returns, any interest which is coming in, are you is Mr. X disclosing it only in his income? Or is it also going to Y? So if it's no money at all from Y, then in that case, uh, yes, uh, you know, Y can be entirely excluded. And that is going to be, you know, considered as his own amount. There are enough uh, judgments on this particular aspect. Okay. Um, okay, I think Mr. Pai is satisfied with the answer. So we'll move to the second question. Uh, Geeta Nadesh is asking, what happens when you don't have children? So, uh, ma'am, again, the law provides for these aspects. So, generally, when if a Hindu female, uh, if she's married and she doesn't have children, then it's the husband who becomes the heir. And let's say if, you know, if she's married, if the no children, no husband, then the mother-in-law gets entitled to the, uh, uh, you know, the assets. In that also, self-acquired goes to mother-in-law. Any asset which comes from your parents that will go to heirs of your parents, etc. So there's a whole chart which is there depending on all the situations. Uh, and law has very clearly listed down who gets entitled in what proportion. Are there any have, other questions? You I, can I have one question, uh, Titi. Yeah, yeah uh, sure. Say that, uh, for example, a friend of mine has gifted me a property 
right and uh, it is the registration has taken place in the register office but okay. i understand her children are against for that is okay. there any is there any chance they can go to the court and claim okay so has the property been given to you yes like you are staying in that property you have possession i am not staying in the property because it was disputed for quite some time okay because i, I have paid her money about 25 years ago and okay. uh, it was it was not given to me but in the end she had gifted me but okay. uh, now i understand that her children are not happy okay so is there any way they uh, they can go to the court and take it back see they can they can definitely approach the court because honestly each one of us have a right to go to court mm -hmm. but but if the property has been gifted to and she's still alive yes okay then 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 there's no problem even if they go to court they can't revoke it because if you have a right you have an inherent right to give away your property so even yeah. if they go to court they can't uh, you know as uh, if your if your friend is around then there is no problem at all thank you thank you i was little worried about this you know. <laughs> yeah aditi i have a question please sure. Uh, sure, sure. a second one please may i voice it please uh, please okay is there a doc i was curious to know whether there is a document such that mm -hmm. if there is a person uh, who uh, let's say uh, has dementia but his his assets are there in the bank is mm -hmm. there a document that can let those funds be used for his treatment can his can his caregivers withdraw that amount and use it for his treatment he cannot sign checks he has dementia but is there a document which empowers them to use his money for his care yes so basically sir in this case uh, unfortunately you have to go to court they give you like uh, you know like they can uh, give an order saying that yes the the caregivers can access this particular amount for this particular treatment okay thank you so much uh, aditi this uh, yellow app only senior citizens who are who have going to make the will they'll have to download Uh, anybody else can download the you know app absolutely ma'am anybody can download like, it it's not like a problem like my children my yeah, children yeah. can but it will uh, be regarding the property the will that i have made is it right so uh, how will they it help them like so so i'll tell uh, you what i'll tell you what uh, see when mm -hmm. you are downloading the app we recommend mm -hmm. that you make your own will of course you mm -hmm. can take your children's assistance but mm -hmm. it should be your name mm hmm Now okay. I'll give you an example. Let's say if you are not very comfortable using the apps, I'll just give you an example. So your mm -hmm. children can download it, but they can put your phone number there. They can put your details over there. So, okay. so technically, what is going to happen? No, no, no. no yeah. My question is, whoever is going to make the will, only that person has to download the yellow app, isn't it? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, and uh, so, after well, supposing. Yeah, I'll I'll tell you how it works. I I know where you're coming from. I'll tell you how it works. So basically, yeah. let's say you make the will on the app. Mm -hmm. uh, when you click on generate will, let's say your mm -hmm. you know your will is done. It comes mm -hmm. to your email. Mm -hmm. It's a password protected document. Mm -hmm. You have to take a print out of that document, and mm -hmm. then you need to sign it and have two witnesses do the same. Only then it becomes a legally valid will. Okay. And okay. that copy you can give it to your children and. Etc. Family okay. members, yeah. Okay, okay. That's how they'll know that you know you've made a will. Okay. Ah, uh, now I've already made a will, not through the app, through the mm -hmm. lawyer. I've already made. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. should I like apart from that? Should I make a living will also? I have a, a, a will will for my estate. Okay. Apart okay. from the living will, also has to be made. So uh, living will, be, yeah, we uh, recommend it's always better to have it so then your children. Uh, uh -huh. you know, have that mental peace. But mm -hmm. what I would recommend is, mm -hmm. you may know will it's fine. But after mm -hmm. this session, what all points I'm going to cover, you can just revisit your will and see if all those aspects are mentioned. If yes, okay. then good to go. And if not, then you can just create a new will. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Mr. Rao is asking. Uh, Doctor Rao is asking. In Hindu family, if a man dies intestate. 
uh, yes sir so the property then gets equally divided amongst wife children and the mother as well so you have wife sons daughters and mother all of them will have equal uh, share of course if the mother is not there then it's fine but otherwise it gets divided between everybody no if the person has done the will even then it has to go to everybody no no if the will is done then the assets go only to the beneficiary under the will and that is why we insist that you can create you should create yeah. a will mm -hmm. because in the absence of a will it gets divided like that if you made a will it only goes to the person whom you want uh, you know who you rather want should receive the asset thank you thank you okay and there's one more question uh if one daughter dies in testate uh then sir in that case the share of the father goes to the children of that particular daughter it doesn't go to the uh, rest of the children so it will go only to so basically it goes to the children of the pre deceased child so it will not go to the husband of the daughter it will go to the children okay uh mr kanan mehta is asking how can a will be kept uh, secure oh sorry okay uh, anjali rao has a question i'll just come to that for an only child you mentioned a will is still required from parent to receive the estate succession uh, certificate and legal assert is needed does one bypass these needs altogether when needed so uh, um, anjali ma'am when you create a will you can bypass all of this so in your will even if you have one child so again the thing to be uh, you know consider is that do you want everything to go to your spouse first and then the child or if you want to, everything to go to your child whatever the situation may be it's important that this is mentioned in the will so once the will is there then you don't need to get the succession certificate and the legal as certificate okay uh coming down okay so mr mehta kanan mehta is asking how can a will be kept secure sec sorry securely so that it's found and applied post the demise of the will maker so that's a very very relevant question so one is yes when you make it if your family dynamics permit you should let your family members know that you've made a will and so and so are the contents of the will uh however uh in case if you don't want to let your children know for some reason you at least let some family member know that you know you you've created this will and uh, basically your family member can uh, family members are aware that such a will exists okay uh mr pai is asking yes adopted child has the same status as a, a biological child but then the adopted child loses the rights to his biological parents okay so naturally he can't take benefits of both he or she so adopted child if there are any other biological children all of them have the same status so let's see now what is the importance of creating a will why is it so important that you know we should uh, have a will so see so far we've seen what really happens when you don't have a will so let's focus now what are the advantages of creating one okay so firstly is the most important part of your estate plan this means that it helps you to bypass your personal laws which apply to you so when you have a will in place your will is going to prevail and all the other complicated laws like indian succession act and hindu succession act and parsi laws and muslim laws those don't apply to you you can decide who should get your property and in what proportion asset transfer to the next generation becomes really smooth which means you don't need to get legal as certificate and succession certificate etc on the basis of your will your asset transfer can take place when it comes to asset discovery which means sometimes you know we've seen 1 lakh 50000 crores of assets are lying unclaimed uh this is because families are not aware so imagine you creating a, a document you creating your will 
where you have clearly mentioned that look these are the bank accounts that i own and this is how the asset should be passed on it becomes really beneficial for the family you know i'd like to share a case over here this was at yellow some time back a father made a will saying all assets go to the to his wife that is the mother of the children he did not mention who is going to receive the assets if the wife is not there he didn't mention any details of the assets now these were unfortunately covid times and husband wife both passed away in quick succession children were studying abroad came to india had absolutely no clue about the parents assets you know they had to be in india for 6 months only to figure out all of this so it's always better you just don't mention the amounts that is there in the bank because honestly that's of no good it's important that you mention the uh the bank account the bank name the branch details and of course the bank account number because values will keep changing i may have 50000 rupees today i may have 5000 rupees tomorrow that's not relevant so you need not mention values but just mention that what bank account uh, which is there in the uh number which is there it definitely helps you to prevent any property and family related disputes because your family is now know what was your intention you know what is it that you truly wanted uh, when it comes to minor children uh, you can appoint a guardian through a will and lastly uh, it gives you the power to choose you know sometimes when it comes to assets we only think of it as bank account or we think of it as land but there may be some things you own it may have sentimental value example a, a necklace that you would have received from your parents at the time of your marriage <laughs> sorry so all these aspects can you know you can decide who's going to value that asset more so you can also plan accordingly and mention those details in the will now these are some of the recommendations that we have at the uh, yellow so essentially some of these are must haves uh 18 years of age sound mind consider like i said mention uh, all the details of the assets so your family knows that what um, you know what assets you own we don't want to add on to the 1 lakh 50000 crores which are already pending the will is to be signed by you and of course two witnesses it's important that you appoint an executor Now, an executor is a person who's in charge of making sure that your assets are distributed uh, he makes sure that uh, you know all the paperwork is in order once distribution is done filing of returns closing of pan aadhar etc so it's interesting that law does not mandate that you have an executor but if you don't appoint one you again need to go to court to have it appointed so that's why uh, and this is usually when family members don't agree between themselves who's going to be the executor uh and definitely like i mentioned it's important that we plan for contingencies uh this means that uh, think about in case if your beneficiary is not there who's going to be the backup beneficiary you've appointed an executor but let's say the executors moved abroad relocated practically it's difficult see they can be appointed executors but what if they refuse to do so you can't force anyone to act as your executor so have a backup in place so that again you don't need to go to court to get all this sorted out and you can do it yourself now there are some of the good hacks uh, that is uh, they add to the robustness of your will so you can get a video recording done make sure that's all in one go one shot uh you know you can like you can read out your will uh you can make sure that uh you know you you are very easily seen in the video while you're signing uh your uh, witnesses are there that is also captured that yes the witnesses have seen the person sign it uh video recording uh, becomes uh, video recording becomes important because uh there have been cases uh, uh, the delhi high court rather has held that there was a case where the original was lost but a proper video recording was there and that's when the court held that no that is a valid will uh, so all this like i said adds to the robustness of the will 
you can also get a doctor's certificate which will say that you are mentally and physically you are you know fit at the time of your will creation uh registration of a will uh, becomes uh, becomes important when you are dealing with any immobile assets in the will now yes like i said uh, the law does not make it mandatory but you know we've seen at the time of asset transfer especially in places like karnataka in delhi in andhra they prefer a registered will and uh, that is why if you are dealing with any immobile property you can get your will registered at yellow we help with registration as well so you may reach out to us uh, if you need any assistance you know the next uh, tip may seem really simple keep your id proofs updated but we've seen clients who have mismatch of spellings and names etc sometimes they're using the first name and uh, sometimes they're using just the first alphabet of the surname this can also cause potential issues later on so just make sure everything is updated and synchronized we do recommend you to update your will from time to time at least once a year just revisit your will and see if all these important aspects are there just see if your will is in line with your wishes if i create a will 10 years back my family constitution may have changed there have been additions deletions of assets what if my entire asset portfolio has changed so just make sure that you update it from time to time and lastly please keep your loved ones informed you know in india we think of a will as such a super secret document that uh, we put it in the bank locker now i must tell you in order to access your bank locker also you will need your will so just make sure that you know you keep it somewhere safe and you've told people that a will has been created so that is the end of presentation i'll just take probably a few minutes to talk about yellow and what services we offer and then of course uh, you know we'll sort of break for uh, any questions so essentially uh, yellow through the app you can create a legally valid will now how this happens is like i said you download the app you will be able to add or you know your details in a very easy and a seamless manner the whole experience is really user friendly so in case if you have any doubts queries questions there is enough and more literature which is available we also have a very active customer support uh, and app experts who handhold you that that's for free you can reach out to them any times you want uh, they help you with you know going to the app and any difficulty that you are facing digitally it's very very secure we use the 256 bit aes encryption which is the highest prescribed technology which is there today and uh, also we you know all your personal data is masked we cannot see your data at all uh, it's only visible to you so uh, your data in terms of security uh, you need not worry about that and lastly like i mentioned earlier it's a single window solution so we help with end to end asset transfer yellow is built by experts we have got more than 50 years of combined experience and you know we've helped protected 42000 crores of indian assets so like i said during lifetime is a app part so you know we've divided the the app is made really easy uh you can add it all your details and only when you generate the will all the legalese gets covered you can see the will preview uh, on the app itself so it's really easy to use coming to the uh, post demise transfer these are all the assets you know all assets in india we help with so whether it's your uh, bank account and mutual funds and any land or house or flat insurance electricity everything we help with you need help with any legal paperwork also we assist you with and lastly uh, these are the yellow plans that we have you can create your will for 1499 uh in a diy fashion and uh, you know so if in case if you need lawyer calls you get two lawyer calls with the option 2 that is for 2499 you get a will as well as the uh, lawyer call when it comes to asset transfer services you again have got two options in case if you know you've lost someone 
and you need help with asset transfer, you can reach out to us. We'll help you. Uh, Yellow is one of the very few companies. We don't charge you on the percentage of the asset that we recover. We only charge for the professional uh, fees that we incur. And of course, we also have a, a plan through which you can prepay a small sum every year. And in the event something happens to you in that year, then all our professional services get covered. And then, you, you know, we help you with the entire asset transfer. So these are some of the organizations that we work with. We help with uh, their employees and creating wills and asset transfer. And uh, lastly, uh, there's a code uh, called Silver15 that you can make use of. It's available on all the plans. And these are some of the means through which you can reach out to us. In fact, you can reach out to, to Silver Talkies and, you know, they may in turn reach out to us either ways, whichever you're comfortable. But do let us know that uh, you're from Silver Talkies so you can avail of these plans. So with this, uh, we've come to the end of the presentation. I was just wanting to know uh, as to if the executor or the, or the witnesses by some chance expire before the testator uh, and he hasn't updated his will, is the will not, is it invalid now? Okay, so let's say that the executor passed away before the testator and yeah. let's say the testator the also... Let's see, yes, the witness has also passed away. So there are two ways. If the testator is alive, then obviously we recommend that, you know, you just sign your will so in front of the new testators since you know that the testators has passed away. Now, in case if the person is also no more, the will does not become invalid because see the role of the witnesses come into picture only if a will is contested. Otherwise, the witnesses don't have any role. So okay. the reason we have witnesses, like I said, is tomorrow the will is challenged and the court calls upon the witnesses that please come and testify that you saw the testator sign and he did it without any external pressure, etc. So that does not impact the validity of the will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I just thought about in case a will is not located and it, it surfaces maybe after two years from the time an individual expired. Uh, is that a valid will? Or they say, hello, you've come here two years too late. Okay, that's again a very good question. See, honestly, that all depends on the facts and circumstances of each case. Because if there are suspicious circumstances, then the person who's contesting the will, challenging the will, needs to prove that this will is brought out under suspicious circumstances. So there's no straight answer to this. See, sometimes families do not immediately, you know, bring about the will and have it executed. They want to settle down, etc. But if the will is just, you know, brought out under suspicious circumstances, then most definitely uh, it can be challenged. And like I said again, but it has to be substantiated by facts. Like why does the family think that uh, you know, this is a suspicious uh, will. Thank you. Yeah, Aditi, Adit, who is the executor? Like, so the testator dies. The testator yeah. dies. Right. Even, so who is the executor? Oh. So, ma'am, executor, like I said, the role of an executor is to make sure that the assets are transferred. He takes care of all the administration. So, you can also appoint the beneficiary also as the executor. Like, your children can be an executor. Okay. So like that. Thank so let's say if you have two children, one can be first executor and next can be backup executor. Thank you. Thank you. Generally to avoid conflicts, parents put elder child as a first executor and the younger child as a second executor. Okay. The will not valid without an executor? No. So ma'am, the will is valid without an executor. But the challenge is that who takes up that role? Who's going to file the returns? Who's going to make sure all the assets are properly transferred? And then when there's a conflict between the family members, that is when you need to again go to court. So, mm -hmm. and we've seen many families go through this. So we always recommend that just mention an executor so that at least a family knows that this person is in charge. Thank because you. everybody wants to shirk off the duty when it comes to doing things. 
uh, that's why just better to have designate somebody as the executor mr kanal is asking does yellow have consultancy services before making a proper will yes so we do and at triple uh, 9 for half an hour we give consultancy so you can you know you can reach out to us and do let us know you're from silver toki so you'll get 15% on that as well off on that as well okay so on that note i think uh...